This is Continuum Drag, a weekly podcast where we watch sci-fi, fantasy, and everything in between. This week, Ghost Watch. The program you're about to watch is a unique live investigation of the supernatural. It contains material which some viewers may find to be disturbing. No creaking gates, no gothic towers, no shutter windows. Yet for the past ten months, this house has been the focus of an astonishing barrage of supernatural activity. Continuum Drago e Osin Gadul Huanyang Hapnida E Podke Sutunun Hagnunesa Jane Duligo Idgoyo Jaunun Luka Ibnida Jodon Shi Hamge He Jugo Gye Sibnida Jodon Shi Odoge Gine Sharayo Okay, I first I, I didn't even know we were recording. Uh and then, and then and then it took me a while to realize what was happening. And then it went much longer than I thought. <laughs> it's just the normal opening, Jordan. It's just the normal opening to this podcast. Do you want to explain what you're doing there? Well, Jordan, things have changed this season. Yeah, they've changed dramatically. <laughs> uh, or, or, and not really because of the magic of technology. <laughs> no, yeah, also exactly the same. Jordan and I are yeah. just recording from a 13-hour time difference now. <laughs> So it's, 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 uh, here's the spoiler. It's eight o'clock my time, nine o'clock Luke's time, but we're in different AM PMs. That's right. AM PMs. Uh, over, over the break, I moved to Korea. South though. South Korea. Yeah, South Korea. And I'm in North. Yeah. You moved to North Korea. They keep a different time zone there just for fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we can't talk about it. <laughs> you're, uh, you're recording this for your glorious leader. That's right. I mean, you're not. He'll be a you guest too, later. You just don't know. He'll be a guest later this season. <laughs> <laughs> one could hope <laughs> uh, but no it's true uh, we are now in very different time zones jordan and i for uh the foreseeable mm. future i'm i'm here uh at least for a year maybe a little longer we'll find out in due time listener although i don't i don't think it's going to change much in terms of the recording no they won't notice the difference i don't think <laughs> yeah except occasionally uh, you might hear some background noise and be like that sounds like korea yeah yeah those, that room tone sounds a little korean to me <laughs> exactly <laughs> I mean, and not only is it our first episode back, and our first episode uh, Canada to Korea style, it's also, Jordan, our spooky Halloween episode. I know. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, I don't think we've ever started a season in uh, October. But then I realized just with our little hiatus we take, it kind of pushes it every time. So Yeah, yeah. The hiatus has is, is just amorphously grown to different lengths of time. So we never know when we're coming back. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, don't you usually have a spooky name for us? I, I usually do, but I, I threw that out to do my uh, Korean opening this time. Right. Uh, and what what was the uh, Korean opening? Oh, it was the typical uh, Welcome to Continuum Drag. This is the podcast. What's real, Jordan? Oh, uh, I don't have anything that's real. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was it. That was it. But all in Korean this one time. I probably won't do it again. <laughs> I was pretty good. I B plus. B Room plus. Grow, you know, for Korean listeners, probably a probably a D minus, but a D minus, yeah. <laughs> um, and also, Jordan, what else is new? We technically have a new format, but we're not doing it this week. So let's save all that stuff for next week. We'll worry about the new format okay. next week because this week it's all TV movies. It's all Ghost Watch all the time. That's right. It's uh the 1992 BBC television movie. Ghost Watch. It's a real spooky treat for the ho- the Halloween season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. It's a real. What is it? What would you? It's a kind of a found footagey kind of thing, or like more of a mock broadcast. Yeah. It's like it's half sort of um like found footage, like Blair Witch Project. I guess that's the default. What are other popular things? Kind of like that. Um. Paranormal Activity. <laughs> paranormal Activity. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. Those. That's what the kids like. But yes, it's also done. Uh kind of half and half where it's also like a live broadcast like a live not not a news broadcast what would you call it sort of like a like a special yeah like a like a special newsy thing what would you call it um news magazine or something yeah yeah and well like like one of the investigative sort of like shows and, and let me ask you this i don't have uh cable anymore and i'm sure you don't and a lot of people don't are these still kind of on the air or these have have these kind of just gone away at this point no I, they must be out there yeah, I remember being a kid and seeing this sort of thing of like, 
I don't know, special, we're going to see if we find Bigfoot tonight or whatever kind of dumb thing like that was. Yeah, I don't know if they're as supernaturally as they were for a time. Um, but I do, you know, I think they're cheap to produce and people love like, uh, let's find out how uh, this businessman stole all this money. Yeah, right, right, right. That great voice, by the way. Let's catch this used car salesman with a hidden <laughs> camera trying to add undercoating. You know what I always like on those things, those like uh, uh, investigative pieces where afterwards they come back with a camera crew and they're always like, the person's like, I don't want to talk to you. And they're like, they didn't want to talk to us. I was like, of course they didn't. You have a big <laughs> you camera, up with a camera crew. They're a private citizen. Yeah. yeah um, um, almost never will anyone want to uh, speak to a camera crew when they're not planned for it. Yeah. The only way you'll talk to someone is they tell you they're a YouTuber first. And then you're like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and this, like, like these mock broadcast kind of things, it's kind of fun because there's there's real BBC personalities involved in it. Like they, I I don't know them, but I'm sure British people do. Well, I recognized um, the only person I recognized was Michael Parkinson. Um, the rest I didn't know. So like I didn't know uh, Sarah Green. I guess is one of the characters. She was an actual reporter, which which is really cool. And I mean, we could talk about um, how this worked and the effects of it. But I think it was a really neat way to do it to really give that sense of realism by using you know real reporters that you would see on tv the night previous as opposed to you know that thing where uh, as soon as you you tip your hand as soon as uh you saw an actor but this just looked like a normal broadcast that you had seen on tv it was pretty good i mean i guess that was because they were aiming for that kind of um war of the worldsy kind of uh angle mm-hmm. although it was right, odd right. for me when i saw the guy from red dwarf was in it <laughs> Well, it's funny. I saw that too. But then I went and I looked up his credits. He had essentially done nothing before that. He wouldn't have been a, a face. Yeah, and he's mostly like kind of a comic man on the street anyway. So like it, I didn't, I was just like, yeah, I, I could see why you'd hire this guy to do this role on this kind of show. So yeah, he's like, a, he's like every weatherman on every news channel That's that they've decided they have to be funny. Um, so had you heard of this uh, TV movie before? No, I'm actually surprised I hadn't heard of it because of um, the little bit of reading I did um, afterwards about sort of uh, how it was broadcast and the effect it had and that sort of thing. I was surprised, uh, surprised I hadn't. Have you? Yeah, I actually was excited. I I I brought it forward because I had um, I was thinking of watching it anyway, and then I'm like, oh, we could do this for our Halloween episode. Um, And I I'd heard of it. It's just like it had a reputation that existed because it has this kind of Mm -hmm. world, the world's kind of like spoofy not spoofy but like mockumentary kind of thing and i was so i was curious i've been curious about it and i this seemed like a good excuse to see what the all the hubbub was about right although uh, i kept seeing um uh th- 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 an interesting thing repeated over and over and, and when i was doing a little bit of reading about it they were like uh people should have known it wasn't real though because it was played during like a drama hour they're like oh that's like I guess the idea being that news is always on at 10 o'clock or whatever, and this wasn't on at that time. But they just kept saying, like, this was the drama hour. This was the drama hour. You would have known. I'm like, but if you didn't know, like, you weren't someone who was in tune with time as much, you know, what time slots, I could see you being confused or, or uh, freaked out about this. Well, it's funny, too. I read a, I read a bunch of sort of the articles around it, and uh, the creators are, you know— they kind of fluctuate back and forth between being like, oh, well, we weren't intending to, like, m- let people think it was completely real. We weren't meaning to, like, be real. But I'm just like, but you guys clearly were. Like, you really went out of your way to, like, pull off a very effective hoax with this thing to the point of having a call in line and all these all these pieces that, like, I think that, I think they try to toe that line where they're like, well, we didn't mean to exactly do this. People should have known it was after, they keep saying this, it was after the watershed. <laughs> yeah, I... I think um, I think it, it, that's a bit of a legality thing. I think uh, with some of the things that happen, I think they uh, they're like, let's just toe the line and let's not uh, tip our hand either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, you, if you read some of the other things I was reading, but it's like you can tell they were also aiming to have this exact effect. Because at some point they considered like piping a uh, low frequency sound through the uh, TV so that people's dogs would start barking at certain points of the scary points. <laughs> uh, but then they found out that the way like TV gets like sent out, those things are automatically like scrubbed from the broadcast anyway, so it wouldn't work. But I was like, mm. so you guys were hoping to freak some people out, which good for you. It works. It's effective. Yeah, it is an effective show. I mean, how do you, I, I, what's the easiest way to kind of go through this? Do you want to talk about it as a format or should we just go right into it? Well, Jordan. Before we do that, oh no! Uh, don't you want to know what's happening on Halloween, October thirty first, nineteen ninety two? I do. 
Well, that's so you and I both, we would have been both being what, 10 years old? Yeah, yeah. I think like grade five ish. Yeah, so both uh, you and I would have been out Halloween. Do you remember what you dressed up as in grade five? I literally wrote that down because I had to think about it. I'm not 100% sure, but I think possibly I was a Ghostbuster. Mm, I think I know what I was too. I'm pretty sure, and this is not a good one, but I was a playing card. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, um, a friend of the family had made like uh, a gigantic... Um, like sort of like a poster board, like front and back, sort of like if you were ashamed for stealing at a store sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, and then it was like laminated or whatever, and it was like whatever it was, the King of Hearts or whatever. Oh, you don't so remember which playing card you requested? No, I don't. I don't. I think it was a king of something. You weren't the Joker of the deck? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. It would have been so awkward walking around and collecting candy. You know, all, you know the reason I remember it was because immediately the, one of the straps broke on my shoulder so i spent the whole night having to hold it up and it was a real pain (laughs) and me and my friend uh uh (laughs) me and my friend harris uh had silly string he went and bought silly string like on on the side because we didn't want to let our parents know and we thought we were pretty bad because our plan was to put silly string on some stuff and uh yeah and then i had had trouble sort of spraying the silly string because my uh my strap was was a, a constant hindrance as they say in England, you were a bit of a hooligan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was a real bit of a hooligan with a silly string that dissolved after an hour or so. <laughs> well, Jordan, what else was happening in the world on October 31st or thereabout? I, you know, I, I, I picked some, cherry picked some things for us mm. to talk about. Uh, October 31st, though, uh, Paul, <laughs> Pope John Paul II apologizes and lifts the 1663 Edict of Inquisition against Galileo. Finally. Finally, Galileo's family can rest assured. Galileo uh, turns over in his grave, but in the good way, where you turn back on your stomach, maybe? I don't, I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah, you, you roll into your comfortable side. Also on October 31st, Jordan, and I think this might be more affecting for you, X-Men the cartoon premieres. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do remember that cartoon. Fun times. Good cartoon. <laughs> it was very Jubilee heavy. She was the popular character at the time, or they were really trying to push Jubilee that's true. That was a hot moment for Jubilee. She never really got that in the movies, huh? No, that was her moment. Uh, a few days later, November 3rd, Bill Clinton wins the election. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He was against uh, George Bush Sr. now and uh, Ross Perot. Oh, that's right. That's right. Mm. What a, what an election. You as a child in your playing card costume, excited to find out in three days who, who wins. It's the, <laughs> that's right. It's the first American re- uh, election that I kind of remember paying attention to. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> um, and this is just for fun since it's our Halloween episode, Jordan. Uh, there were only two scary movies released in October of 1992, I think theatrically in the States anyway. I don't know. This is a very mm. loose research on my part. But can you think of what the two movies in 1992 horror films might have been in October? Was it one of the one of the Halloween movies, like Halloween 5 or something like that? I'm afraid it wasn't, no. Hmm. So it's 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 a standalone. There are two standalones. Uh, I believe one of them has sequels for sure, and the sequels. One of its sequels is very recent, and the other one I don't know if it has any sequels. <laughs> well, I guess Halloween, and that and that had a sequel recently. I don't know, think anyone cared, but um, I'm gonna say uh, 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 the Fly because there was a sequel to the Fly. The Fly was earlier. It was like '87 or something like that. Um, I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> I, I just bailed out. I, I pulled out right away. It was Candyman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Candyman. And Dr. Giggles. I don't know what Dr. Giggles is. I can think of the uh, like cover for it. It's like a dentist, the scary dentist. <laughs> Dr. Giggles. Maybe Larry Drake is the dentist, the guy from Dark Man. <laughs> I, I know who that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he might be Dr. Giggles. Dr. Giggles. I'll have to look that up. I do remember Candyman. I know some people um really like Candyman. Luke, do you remember when I, I, I drove very far uh to they were playing Candyman at some little tiny little festival and what's his face was there signing autographs? I do uh, remember Candyman this. Uh, Tony Todd, great actor. Tony Todd. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get his autograph because he was charging like some stupid buddy with it for it, but it was like ten bucks to get his photo, so I chose that. <laughs> <laughs> you should have brought a picture of him as Worf's brother to sign. Yeah, I'm like, can you sign this Kern poster, please? Big Kern fan here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know I'm a big Kern fan. 
<laughs> he's pretty great in those Star Trek episodes. He's yeah, he is. He was he was in Deep Space Nine. He played a couple characters. He was always good in Star Trek. He was in. Uh, he was old Jake Sisko in like one of the best episodes That's of Deep right. Space Nine. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Nerd. I uh, know, right? Can you believe it on this podcast? <laughs> it's great. I love it. All right, let's let's get into it. Here's the okay. IMDb summary for Ghost Watch, which I've truncated a little bit because it was really long. The BBC gives over a whole evening to a, quote, investigation into the supernatural, end quote. Uh, and that was courtesy of Gary Thompson. Gary Thompson. Yeah, I mean, I think we've said it from the beginning. Really what this is is it's sort of that investigative uh, journalist sort of uh, type show and uh, mixed with um, – uh, pretty good, I think, for the time, too, the way they um, intercut it with, like, as if they're going live to this footage of, of um, like, a team at a house that has had a history of... Spooky's goings-ons. Yeah, spooky goings-on. So they're like, maybe we'll catch something tonight. And they have, like, a crowd outside. And there's, like, so they'll go, get to go to a couple multiple reporters, one inside, one outside. It's, it's, um, it's set up very well. And I have to say, in terms of the structure of this, um, I mean, it's a 10 out of 10. Like they nail, they nail what these shows look like. They nail the realism. Um, there's no real tells at all throughout the show. Um, like there's not a point where you're like, I don't think that makes sense. Like they go through everything at the beginning. Like the uh, yeah. Uh, well, you said you knew the host, Michael Parkinson. Yeah. Now I don't know him, but he clearly is some sort of major BBC host. Uh, when I looked into him later. And he's kind of introducing us to the fact that they're going to go investigate a haunted house live on TV for Halloween this year. And like yeah. they have some, some footage from an earlier investigation where these two little girls are like waking up in the middle of the night and screaming as things fall off the wall and like a lamp explodes. So you're like, oh, it's going to be scary at this haunted house. Yeah. And then I, what I like the best off the top, though, is that montage where they like load all the gear into the BBC trucks and like drive yeah, yeah. over to the house. I was laughing so hard at that montage. <laughs> I liked it. You know what though? It I I think it it really fits with what was happening at the time. You know, in like 1992. Like this is this is what it would have looked like on TV. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to Fox Hill Drive in North Holt. Mm-hmm. I don't know where that is. And I guess it's a, it's in a state house. That's a thing, right? In a state house. Yeah, it's like um um, uh, not quite the equivalent of like government housing, but it's a similar t- sort of thing where I think it's you rent from the government. I believe someone in England will have to correct me. Fair enough. And we kind of get an introduction to all the major characters in that we get to meet all the various, like, people who will be involved. Like, there's uh, Dr. Lynn Pascoe. She's a university researcher into psychology and the paranormal. And she's been, Mm -hmm. like, researching this family for a while. And, like, she saw them on a a, a, sort of – they were on some sort of talk show uh, being interviewed about being a haunted family. So she started investigating them after this talk show or something. Yeah, her research is basically – she's like, I saw them before. (laughs) I like that she said she saw it while she was investigating a violent poltergeist in Germany. Uh, so she knows what the psychological damages can do to a family. <laughs> what you really need to know is that she is pro ghosts, basically. Yeah, she's pro ghosts. She, no, yeah, she she believes in ghosts. She researches ghosts. So she'll be set up in this episode as the the expert that is like is hoping something will happen in this house. Yeah, she's always sitting with uh, Michael Parkinson, just just like commenting with him on what's happening. They're giving live commentary, basically. Yeah, exactly. There's also a telephone esque series of phone banks set up for people to call in with their own ghost stories, and that's that's helmed by Mike, nicknamed Schmitty Smith. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I don't know who. I didn't know who Mike Schmitty Smith Smith is, but I guess he's also a, a news. He's a new uh, guy. person he, on the BBC. He's uh, he's very funny because like I was like, oh, this guy's really going to come up, but he's not really. He's just hanging out there, uh, uh, just getting calls with people's ghost encounters on there. I don't know if you caught this, but I, I believe one of the other characters calls it on their uh, quote, "Which board? I mean, switchboard." Nice. I didn't catch that. That's good though. I like it. <laughs> and then on location, they have like a reporter at the house. That's uh, Sarah Green. They mentioned she was part of Hospital Watch before this, which I guess is a show about uh, the hospital system in BBC or in England. I think it's just a it's just a hidden camera that just watches. It doesn't do anything. Okay. It just watches. Okay. You're like, oh, look at that. And they make Trollies. funny comments as they watch. That's right. <laughs> and uh, she'll be reporting from inside the house. And she's also a bit of a ghost believer. Uh, at some point during this scene, she'll give a little anecdote about how she was staying at a friend's house um, and saw a ghost 
but uh before she left the house she like gave the ghosts good news and the ghosts like kind of settled down i guess the, the house they were at was like a 15th century house owned by the indian viceroy who had buried two of his indian concubines in the garden i was like what is this story you're telling yeah this story was a little bit i remember my notes were like oh we're right in the line here guys um, real, real yeah, british this... story yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, and with her in the house will be her camera team chris miller um who as she says looks like mike getting and they all laugh and i'm like who's mike getting yeah that was it was just one of those references where it just no one knows any 30 years later who this person is but i think i, 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 I caught that too i think it was a cricketer yeah, wow there you go still wouldn't have known and then she also introduces her sound guy who'll be in there with her mike anton and she's like and he looks like Egan Evans. I'm like, who? <laughs> <laughs> it is weird to um, also introduce people that you know and then tell other people who they look like. It was so funny to do that for both of her her like technical team. I'm like, okay. And then, of course, out there who won't really go into the house, but there's the man on the street, as we've talked about before, is Craig Charles from Red Dwarf, who's uh, yeah. playing himself. And he, yeah, like you said, he's like the weatherman. He interviews neighbors. He goofs around with the crowd and just keeps it light on the outside of the house. Um, you know what? That's a good point to make, though. Is is um, uh, the tone of this really is sort of um, uh, at, at the very beginning they sort of set up that like uh, a lot of people think it's kind of jokey, and he's one of the main people where it's like this is a silly little fun thing we're doing tonight, right? And they don't take it too seriously, so we can have a bit of a turn later in mm-hmm. terms of like what's happening. Um, but they like um, uh, Craig outside, and then. Um, one of the people inside is sort of kind of making little jokes too about like spooky sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's definitely that. It's definitely handled with a light touch where you're, it feels mm-hmm. like a real broadcaster. Like, isn't this a funny thing we're doing? Yeah, it was a fun thing we're doing for Halloween. Yeah, yeah. And then there, of course, is the family who's being haunted in this house. There's single mother, Pamela Early. Yeah. Her, her daughter, the oldest daughter, Suzanne Early, and the youngest daughter, Kim Early. And they're a pretty standard family, I, I'd say. Yeah, they're they're like uh, two kids. I I never really I, I I can never remember which kid was what. They one was like Suze and one was like Shirley or something. Yeah, my notes like are just like it. older sister, little sister. That's what I call them. Exactly. Yeah, and they're and they're rather interchangeable. Yeah, they're pretty. It's a pretty generic family, but I think that works for what it is. It's just like an average family getting haunted. Mm-hmm. Um, and the house itself has been rigged up with a bunch of remote cameras so that they can, like, cut around and look at things. And at some point, they're like, and we've also installed temperature sensors uh, so we can catch temperature changes. Literally never comes up again. Yeah, that's right. It didn't, did it? They spent so much time discussing them all the time. And I kept waiting for it to pay off. That, that's right, because they have hidden cameras. They have the camera crew and they have thermal cameras. Yes. Um, Which do get used kind of later on. I don't know if it's the most effective use because they sort of like played it up. Like I thought that was going to be sort of a scare. Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to go around a room and you'd only, you'd finally see something. It's not really how it's used. Um, I'll give them this. They, they, they stick with the realism of this as much as they can. So there isn't, this doesn't have the same kind of jump scares and things you would think would start happening um, in the show. No, not at all. Not at all. I would agree with that. And I mean, it's very funny. It's something they say, and this is very weird and very nice, but they say they selected this house via a computer program that picked it as the most haunted house in the UK. <laughs> well, they asked the computer program. I think it's fine. It makes me laugh so much when, it, when something's chosen by a computer program. And it sort of starts off with the family describing how the haunting started about a year ago. Like the kids complained of like a weird presence in their room. And then the mom saw this ghost and they they kept hearing thudding in the walls. And the mom tried to keep the kids calm by saying, oh, it's probably just the pipes in the house. Um, But it resulted in the kids calling the ghost pipes, which is a good ghost name. (laughs) Spooky. Yeah. So, yeah, because it's always seems to be the water pipes that are making the making this noise the kids have called it pipes um and somehow when i first heard it, i was like ha ah, pipes but then by the end it did really seem to have this um uh, uh malevolent undertone to the name yeah i was I just d- like that's eh, creepy now pipes yeah. didn't didn't care for the name pipes all there after by the end <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. um and they've been able to determine that the ghost lives under lives in the room under the stairs <laughs> And uh, they kind of noticed because the mom, mom got trapped under there with pipes one time. And then since then, they've boarded up the door to the uh, to the room under the stairs. Yeah, it's sort of like a, I don't know if it's an entire basement, but it's sort of like that. It's that like you'd seen a lot of older homes with like near the stairs. 
because there's extra headway, there'd be another staircase going down to like a cellar of some sort. Right, right, right. Do what did they keep calling it, Jordan, over the course of the miniseries? Or the oh, I movie? can't. Rem- they 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 called it something else. I don't know. It was like a uh, um, what did they call it? Well, we won't dwell on this, but they just kept calling it this, and I was just like, it's so weird. Uh, it, I believe in the England it is called a glory hole. Oh, that's right. That's right. They did call it a glory hole. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I mean, different name, different connotation. Different connotation. A lot of English slang in this that I had to like. Like juggle. Fanny, Fanny here's a butt. No, it's not over there. It's not over there. So much, yeah. so many differences between us. Yeah. Um. Yeah, anyways, I won't go to others. And uh, they've had a few other incidents, like the older sisters had got has gotten scratches on her from pipes, and like the mum. Yeah, yeah. The mom at some point she said, "I found her school book when I opened it up, and they, like she holds up the school book to the camera, and there's just penises drawn in it." <laughs> and she's like, "I nearly beat her when I saw it." And then she told me it was the ghost. I'm like, "I'm like, excuse me, you nearly beat her?" Well, I mean, all of that checks out. Uh, my question is, why are ghosts always scratching everybody? It's never anything else. They're always scratching. We got the sharp little fingernails. <laughs> Yeah, ghosts always have sharp fingernails. That's what we've learned. <laughs> anyway, back in the studio uh, at the phone lines, people uh, people have started calling in because th- that footage they started showing at the beginning of the uh, you know of an earlier instance of books falling down and the little girls being scared in their room. People have been noticing they think there's like a, a figure standing in the back of the room and the, they're they're quite worried about it. And uh, Michael Parkinson and Dr. Pasco pull up the footage and they they watch it and like they're like, mm, I think it's just a shadow that's in the footage. It's not a, you're not seeing anything real, though. I think we can all tell there's really a ghost yeah. in that footage. And, and I should stop us just quickly to say, like, apparently how they filmed this was all this stuff that... Um, uh, outside of the studio was filmed, you know, they filmed it all and, and finished it all. Then they played that quote unquote live to people in the studio so they could react live to it. Now the actual broadcast is not live, but the way they did it was to keep that spontaneity of having uh, Parkinson and um, Dr. Pasco respond to it live. I'm sure they did multiple takes and that sort of thing, but it does give it this sense of immediacy and this sense of urgency and realism that I think would have been lost otherwise. Yeah, I would say that definitely sells. Yeah, it, it definitely, and it was. I wouldn't have thought to do it that way, and it and it is. It works really well, um, because you do feel like they're calling and they're waiting for responses and that sort of thing. Um, and apparently they the um the BBC did have the call number that they put up was real. Um, and people would call in during the broadcast, and I guess what the to the point you made earlier, which saying the creators sort of like, uh, will they won't they or sort of like admit whether what they were trying to do is. As, apparently as soon as you called in the the voice said just so you know this is a fake show uh what you're watching is not real it's not live feel free to tell us a ghost story though like as a fun thing and we'll play a ghost story later if you record yourself telling a ghost story but whether it was meant to or not so many people called in that the lines were just shown to be busy so very few people actually heard that voice message all they got was a busy line so people started freaking out because they thought if, if they had been worried, they were calling and then couldn't get through, and no one did actually hear that message. I think they said something like, I don't know what it was, but it was thousands of people called in. That's amazing. That's I hadn't yeah. I hadn't read that. That's crazy that it yeah. like jammed the phone line so badly that no one got the message. I'd seen there was a message saying it wasn't real if you called, yeah. but I didn't realize that it got so jammed people didn't get that message. Yeah. So which is which is kind of funny. Now, what whether that was done on purpose or not, I'm not sure, but but it did have um it did add to the effect of um something urgent is happening something you know not planned is happening yeah yeah built that war of the world's mystique exactly yeah exactly um in the studio they decide to call up uh they bring in a remote guest from uh new york to come in and he's like another psychologist (laughs) who he's he's a real ghost skeptic and he basically is there to keep calling dr pasco a fraud he's a wet blanket he's a wet blanket he's basically there to be the anti um dr pasco he's like he's he's a little bit smug I think that's why they, they chose to make him American, at least the English did. And, uh, yeah, he's there to be like, mm, ghosts aren't real. You guys are wasting your time. Yeah, yeah. And then throughout the broadcast, they'll also cut away to pre-recorded clips of people telling their own ghost stories. Uh, my favorite was there was a, a guy who, since being anonymous, he, they'd blurred his face out. And he tells the time, he tells a story about the time that a ghost spat on his mackerel lunch, like spat goo on it. <laughs> I, I laughed at that too because I lo- I was I was listening and I was like hold on is this whole story about how ghosts spat on him 
And and yes, yes, it is. The ghost spat on him. Yep, that was his ghost story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a good ghost story. I mean, yes, it, sorry, it is a good ghost story. If someone told me that at a party, I'd laugh. But in terms of like a ghost story, like, hold on. So it just spit on you? Like, yep. He spat right on his mackerel lunch. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, it also spit on his shoe. That's why he wanted to remain anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want the societal shame of it. Uh, outside the house, the man on the street, Craig Charles, does a few interviews with neighbors. And uh, it's kind of odd. When he does the interviews with neighbors, you really find out this is a bad neighborhood for kids. Like, he's like, that's right. The neighbors are like, oh, well, there's that missing girl. Oh, remember that five year old was stabbed here? Oh, and then the other day when I took my kids to the park, we found a pregnant dog butchered and its fetuses spread over across the playground. <laughs> Okay, so let me ask you ask you about that because this sort of um they sort of do a very slow build where I think you as a viewer are supposed to get the feel that something's not right as this as this progresses. Now, is the idea that this neighborhood's not very good or just that bad things are happening because of the energy of these ghosts or because like like what was the point because i thought there was going to be a payoff to that especially with oh, weirdly they kept showing those kids in halloween masks i was sure it was going to be something but maybe that's just because i've been so p- programmed by scary movies yeah i expected it to spill to the street as well but it never really does like it implies that like the house has affected the neighborhood but everything stays pretty internal to the house well that was my question is, is that what they're implying that the house is sort of this evil uh, structure of some sort so so because of that bad things are happening or is it that the opposite this area is bad so thus the energy has been created into this house or is it unrelated this is just a way to waste time i wasn't sure no i, I feel like it's the house doing it to the neighbor because they actually cut to the he interviews some guy who's like I, not a priest but he's like i came here to give it like sort of an exorcism but not because i'm not That's a right. priest and the energy was so bad that i didn't do anything i'm like okay <laughs> Yeah, well, almost all the people in the street sort of end like that. They're like, something really bad happened. They're like, anyway, back to what we're doing. You're like, is this? Is there any any reason for this? Like, nope. Well, that's just it. And back in the house, uh, our our reporter uh, Green has been hanging out there with the family, just you know, bobbing for apples, doing doing just like Halloween stuff with the kids. But finally, there's been some breaking news. Luke, you ever bob for apples? Mm, you know what? I don't think I have. Maybe once. Maybe once. I think I. I think maybe I did once. Yeah, yeah, once. I don't think you're allowed in this in this post-COVID world. I don't think you're allowed to bob for apples anymore. I do have some vague memory of uh, realizing this was a futile task and why do they make kids do this? Yeah, I don't think bobbing for apples is as popular as it once was. Let's bring it back. And if we do it, the kids are going to want to do it is what I'm saying. Well, you've got two Halloween parties this year, so do it at both. <laughs> don't reveal my secrets. <laughs> But in the house, there is actually finally breaking news after, you know, we've been at this for about half an hour, 45 minutes of this TV movie. Uh, Green, uh, Green, the reporter, has found a wet circle on the carpet. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And it, it looks just like that. It looks like like a pet has peed on a carpet, but it's in a perfect circle. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of like, what is this? Where did it come from? They check the ceiling to see if it's leaking. It's not leaking. Um, and then they take my favorite part is they're like, we'll take a sample of it. And then they use sort of like like a little squeeze pump to like, because I was like, how do you take a sample from wetness of a carpet? And I was like, oh, there you go. That's how you do it. A little pump thing. <laughs> I know. I thought it was my dude. Get a sample. Um, of course, uh, there's all, in addition to this wet carpet, uh, Pipes has been uh, being a little creepy because he's, he's made the actual pipes in the house a little finicky. So when someone goes to get a glass of water, they get pranked and get sprayed by uh, too, much, too much pressure. <laughs> yeah. I got more questions about the circle, though. Um, in terms of ghost world, what is what is that? Is that him spitting? Is it him peeing? Is oh, it just his? Oh, good question. It, you know what I mean? Like, what is this? And and why is it a perfect circle? Because the, the the doctor uh, doctor Pascal at one point sort of like goes, oh, this is a classic like ghost thing, and they leave perfect circles and blah blah. And I was like, why? It's a why good question. A it's a good circle? question. There's a lot of weird liquid stuff with ghosts here. I do think you're right yeah. though. I think she says there's like. There, she's like classic poltergeist moves and wet stuff is one of them. Yeah, but like it's ectoplasm. That's what we're basically supposed to know, right? I guess so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure was what we're supposed to know from that wet circle. Yeah. Again, it doesn't really pay off to anything. There's a lot of these sort of like little things like you're saying, like it's all I think just a build is what it is. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a little circle on the, gr- go- on the ground. That's weird. The pipes are kind of going. That's weird. There's noises. That's weird. That's kind of the 
the uh, um, the way they sort of build things. Well, that's just it. I mean, as you're saying, like, um, these creepy things are starting to build up. Like, the sound guy says he's been hearing scratching in the walls, and the camera guy points out that his watch has stopped. And, and like you said, that Pasco had mentioned something about the water circle. She does say at this point that, like, these are all classic poltergeist moves. First it makes sounds, then it does water stuff, and then next it's going to be getting physical, so... Mm -hmm. right yeah scratching it's gonna it's gonna use those little sharp fingernails to scratch it's not gonna pull hair it's not gonna it's not gonna rearrange your clothing it's gonna scratch you anyway they they go back to take a few quick phone calls back into the studio um where where a man calls in to say that they've been he's been watching the show uh, and he thinks a ghost has uh, knocked his cheese and pickle sandwich off his couch i thought the same thing you ever had a cheese and pickle sandwich never in my life me, me neither. Let's have them today. Let's have one. You have one in Korea. I have one in Canada. Cheese and pickle sandwich. Right. I'll have it at midnight. You'll have yours at noon. <laughs> yeah, it works better for me. Um, I, my favorite part of this call is that uh, Michael Parkinson is like, basically says, I think this man's a drunk. Let's not take him seriously. Yeah, he, yeah, it's funny. There's a couple of things where he seems like he's irritated. And what I like is like, that's what you're doing for tonight, though. Like, it's like he's irritated at like like calls and things. I'm like, what else would you be doing? Yeah, as, as it goes on, he's just like, we didn't think this through, did we? <laughs> <laughs> exactly anyway there's more breaking news in the house the the sound guy has started following more scratches and it's in the walls like they're following it from room to room it seems to be leading yeah. it around and uh the kids start screaming saying that pipes is in the kitchen and uh when they go down there they find that there's like kids drawn thro- drawings thrown all over the floor and you'll get uh you get a classic uh jump scare spook where uh, a cat pops out and scares someone <laughs> yeah but but i like that the jumping cat is just like behind the screen door yeah it's outside like it's standing fine. there this is, it's yeah, it's like walking fine. by yeah um and then they start hearing more banging upstairs like the pipes in the house are banging um and they're gonna run upstairs to see if they can catch the ghost in action but uh from the studio michael parkinson stops them uh, from going upstairs because uh, from inside the studio they have these hidden cameras everywhere and uh he alerts the team to be uh let them know that the older sister has gotten out of bed but she seems to have walked toward the exit of the room, but never left the room. They don't know where she's gone. She stepped out of view of the cameras, basically. And uh, they're able to use the cameras remotely to, like, I guess they can move them remotely. So they zoom around, and what they see is the older sister's actually just banging on the pipe. She's, she's faking it all, basically. And um, it, it's all, it's, it, you know, they very quickly go from, like, investigating this to Michael Parkinson being like, well, that's it, everybody. That's the end of the broadcast for tonight. We've determined little girl is a hoaxer. <laughs> I mean, but to be fair, I mean, if that was, if this was a real broadcast and it was really live and they got that, they would you know, sort of switch gears mid-show because for all intents and purposes, it, it looks like what you're seeing is this whole thing was just an attention thing. It's a uh, boy in the, boy in the, the balloon. Remember that thing or whatever? Like these sorts of like, you're just doing this for attention. That's sort of what it looks like is the one girl has just been doing this the whole time. For sure. I mean, Michael Parkinson immediately cuts back to the skeptic uh, doctor in New York who is basically just like, told you so. Yeah. he li- They literally like, do you want to say you told you told us so? And he's like, well, I'm not going to say that. But yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, Dr. Pascoe's a fraud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's she's very uh, – Dr. Pascoe the whole time is very uh, – uh, uh, the performance is as, as if she has to defend herself at all times and she has been defending herself for a long time. Like she's sort of like exasperated before she even starts. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of fun because I do like this part about this too. Is like Parkinson is basically like, well, we solved the mystery and he really does start kind of wrapping up the broadcast. It does feel like they're like, he's now starting like just push toward the end. But uh, Smitty on the phone lines cuts in and um, they're being inundated with phone calls right now. Viewers just keep calling in to report they've seen pipes in that bedroom footage from earlier that they said mm-hmm. it's just a shadow. Um, and Michael Parkinson wants to like brush past it. But Smitty's just like, you don't understand. They're all calling in to say they're seeing the same thing. A bald man covered in cuts with no eyes wearing a black dress everyone sees the same thing like smitty's kind of freaking out Mm -hmm. yeah and we didn't mention this actually smitty's uh not well used maybe because he's maybe one of the weaker actors in the show but the threat for him is that uh green the reporter in the um in the house is actually his wife so there's supposed to be some tension for him that's right yeah he's sort of like he loves his wife but he's he's not uh He's not really buying this, and she is. So there's like this kind of jokey kind of thing between them, this jokey tension. 
Yeah, but then as sort of people start calling in, really reporting these like same ghost sightings, he starts getting really freaked out for his wife. But mm-hmm. like he's too far away to do anything about it. Um, Parkinson anyway says, "All right, we need to take a break. Let's run another uh, pre-taped person telling a ghost story about getting their food spat on or whatever, um, so we can get a <laughs> chance to like reset here." I can't wait to tell people that story and pretend it's me, and then the ghost spat on me. But as the as this pre-recorded ghost story starts playing, there's just being technical difficulties, and like the camera cuts back to basically, you know, uh, there's a floor director talking to Parkinson in his chair, and uh, they they've come back too early from this story because it's broken down, and Parkinson is forced to vamp. Basically, he's just like, "Oh, we're mm. we're back live. Uh, I guess let's uh, let's just take a live call. Uh, who do you got right now? Anybody? Just just put them put them on TV. Put the call on. We'll we'll take it to fill time, and." Um, the woman calling in is begging Parkinson to stop the broadcast. She's talking about how the glass table in her home exploded while they were watching it and basically cut her husband to ribbons. He's been taken off by an ambulance now. There's blood everywhere in her house, but her kids haven't reacted. They're just staring mindlessly at the TV. They're not They're not reacting to anything, and she's freaking out. Yeah. She, 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 they're hypnotized. She needs him to stop the broadcast, and... Uh, I love this from Parkinson too. He basically just like keeps keeps telling her that it's after nine PM and her kids should be in bed. They shouldn't be That's watching right. anything after the watershed. Just turn off the TV, put your kids to bed, lady. It's too late for them. Yeah. Um and, and to two things. One, to sort of um illustrate because obviously we don't see this we just hear what the woman's saying uh, to illustrate how bad this um explosion i guess of the table was she keeps saying there's blood all over the wallpaper like it has been it was it wasn't just like a cut like it was a big thing so um it's a serious event that has happened um but this really is um uh the fir- they're sort of seeding the ground for what's going to happen later which is this idea that the broadcast itself is now part of uh, part of what's happening um the haunting is spreading via the broadcast yes exactly so w- uh, their actual presence is um uh, magnifying what's actually happening yeah and it's at this moment dr pascos asked the vtr staff to queue up an old interview she had done with the little sister in which the little sister describes pipes in the exact same way as all the callers just to, to like further drive home and just like there's a ghost here for sure it's not a hoax it's not a little girl like playing a prank um, pipes is real i um, mean at that moment that green uh, back in the house she cuts back into the live broadcast and uh she's talking about like what we see in the house is that the the entire place is now filled with like the sound of cats screaming and scratching on all the yeah. walls it's just like a nightmare has broken loose there <laughs> And when they go upstairs, they find the little sister, She's or the older sister. She's in bed, and she's once again covered in scratches. Classic poltergeist behavior, just covering someone in scratches. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they, like, pull back the cover. She's laying there, and it's that, like, you've seen it before, like, just scratches all over her kind of face stuff, like someone has just been clawing at her. Mm-hmm. And uh, Green and the camera crew go into the bathroom to grab her a glass of water, and we get a classic, uh, uh, classic ghost thing. It's actually a part of a video game I play uh, it's called Phas- Phasmophobia. You, like, walk into a room, and the ghost goes, ah, behind your back. <laughs> classic ghost. The, the one thing we know is them doing that and spitting on you. Classic ghost behavior. Classic and scratching ghost. you with their sharp fingernails. Yeah, yeah. So the, the spooks are really coming up now. And they, they go back to studio and Mark Michael Parkinson, he's... Uh, He's saying it's time to move on to their next scheduled program. But, you know, things are really picking up now. So in light of the current events of the little girl getting scratched, things are really changing by the moment. They're going to they're gonna stay with this and they're going to preempt the next program. So we're, we're sticking with this. You know, this is a great way of like, I think it's probably in the broadcast close to the hour mark here. Uh, so that, like the idea that like if this were a real broadcast, they'd be moving on. But now they're, they're now it's all live. Like it's getting too scary yeah. to go away from. Um, Smitty cuts back in with another call from the phone bank. Um a woman's called in, and they put her on the line with uh, Dr. Pasco and uh, Parkinson. And she's talking about how her mother used to, when they were kids, you know, scare the kids to be good by telling them that uh, if they if they didn't behave, she'd send them to a uh, quote unquote baby farmer, um, which is explained later as a child minder in the UK, a baby farmer. <laughs> baby farmer. They also call um uh uh the person who goes and cuts branches of a tree is uh, a tree doctor so i enjoyed that that's no, was... un- unrelated to anything i just i just like that term there were lots of good little britishisms in this weren't there yeah 
Um, but this this baby farmer, this child minder, the mom threatens them with. She she she's uh, the mother always said that she'll drown you if you go there. So be good. Um, and when this woman grew up, she kind of looked into this. Uh, woman her mother always used to threaten to send her to and it turned out it was a real case of a of a babysitter who used to murder kids by drowning them and then that lady well hey, she lived on fox hill drive jordan yeah yeah this is this is looking worse things are getting worse things are looking worse there's scarier things have happened here uh they cut back to the house and like jordan shit has gotten too real now um <laughs> that's right they've uh they've they're freaking out they decide they need to get the kids out of the house like this is all going haywire um but the little sister just won't leave the little sister just screaming that pipes wants them to stay that pipes is too excited to have everyone see what's gonna happen like pipes needs them to stay and like the adults are basically dragging the children out of the bedroom trying to uh trying to get to the door there's like a pretty decent scene here where the camera there's a noise and the cameraman turns around and like you you for a second see pipes like standing in the curtains yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and they do that a few times. Like everything again is is done, uh, a subtle enough that it it could be real. Like like even the image uh, that we see originally that they keep talking about that people see um see the ghost in. You see that image and you're like, I do see it. And then when they show you the picture later, it's a slightly different doctored photo that doesn't have the ghost in it. Mm-hmm. And and little things like this, like he's in the background for only a second. I think maybe two or three times. We get these sort of very uh, glimpses, uh, quick shots, little glimpse of him in the background. It's all done enough that and fast enough that you'd be like, did I see it? Um, and so I thought that was really well done. Yeah, I think at one point they're like, I think maybe when looking at the kids photos in the kitchen, the camera pans up and in the reflection of the kitchen window, if you look quickly, like pipes is clearly stand, like is standing in the background, but it's so quick it goes by. And then I think yeah. even when Dr. Pasco's in studio, they have her on a very black set. And somewhere deep out of focus in the background, at some point you can see a face like vaguely mm-hmm. there. And then when they cut back to where it's gone again. And if you think about it too, like this is, you know, 1992 in like probably mostly over the air broadcasts to people. Like, so the quality is already probably dipped down quite a bit anyway. It's probably very effective when it was just like, you know, it, it could just have been some a glitch or an error in the broadcast. Well, especially if, if you were a kid watching this, you'd be like, you know, mom, did you see that sort of thing? You know? Oh yeah. hundred um, percent. You know? Um, they got back to the studio. Smitty still had the phone lines. They're still blowing up. People are calling in and they're freaking out. The, apparently, clocks and houses have stopped. Electronics are That's going right. haywire. Dogs won't stop barking. Kids are breaking shit. Like, it's 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 a madhouse out there. Everyone watching this broadcast is experiencing, like, uh, weird stuff in their homes. Mm-hmm. That's right. And my favorite thing is that, at this point, uh, Parkinson is... So upset. He he dismisses everything as pranks. He's like, these are all just pranks. People are just calling in with pranks. It's, it is weird. And I don't know if this is because I'm not that familiar with him as a broadcaster. I don't know if he's sort of known as like a no-nonsense, stern sort of uh, uh, a person. But he sort of takes takes the stance very quickly that like everyone needs to calm down and this is all silly and uh uh people need to kind of smarten up that sort of scene reminds you of like 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 a teacher being like all right kids smarten up enough of this and it's like but didn't you agree to do this silly kind of broadcast like it, like it's like well you know what i mean like i'm not sure i'm like well what are you irritated about it's i think it's because his turn doesn't quite work because his personality doesn't quite go that strict so it's like as this turn sort of happens like he's he's doing not a terrible job of it but it does feel like a bit him having to play the skeptic, uh, non-believer, it just comes on a little hard, I think. Right, right. Yeah, because even he, when he sort of has like, I don't know if it's now or a little bit later, he sort of has like a somewhat aggressive um, interaction with uh, Dr. Pasco. And it's like, calm down, man. Like, just, you're fine. You, you invited her on as a guest. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I, I do agree. I think if there is a weakness, it's like just that turn doesn't quite work. It's not that it's bad. It's not like completely awful, no. but it's not quite there. Anyway, uh, back they cut back to the house and the kids have still not been dragged out of the house yet. Things are freaking out. The older sister's laying on the ground and she starts talking in demon voices, uh, really ripping into her mother, really giving her mother the what for. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Anytime the demon voices come out, you know there's trouble. And yeah, and again, yeah. pr- pretty pretty well done. Um, kind of creepy the way they shot it. It's like kind of a close up of her, the little girl behind. I think she's behind a chair, is what it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, and she's sort of like rah, 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 she, in, the, in this creepy voice that I, I I guess we're supposed to believe is um, pipes coming through her. 
Yeah, and I mean, what she's complaining, what the pipes voice is complaining about too, is just really like you know her mother's insecurities about being a bad mother. So it's you know it's it's an effective little scene. Um, yeah. And the little sister has just disappeared. Like Green starts looking around the reporter, she doesn't see the little sister anywhere. So she starts searching everywhere. She's going upstairs by herself. The remote cameras are cutting to watch her, and uh, finally she finds little sister in the kitchen. And when she finds the little sister, uh, the little sister has just finished drowning her stuffed bunny and has torn its eyes out because Pipes told her to. Yeah. Classic pipes. I mean, he's uh, he's get, he's get those eyes he's out of there. He's scratching people. He's talking through them, and he's telling people to rip eyeballs out. Yeah, yeah. You don't need them. Not where we're going. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's funny. That's good. <laughs> it's at this moment that the sound of screaming cats starts like emanating terribly from the boarded up door under the stairs. Like it's just like cat sounds coming out of there so in a classic found footage style like the cameraman has to put the camera down facing yeah. the door directly so that they can tear the boards off the door yeah and then they so turn the tearing the, the door off they open it up and uh it's sarah's the reporter right yeah sarah green so they, so they open the door and she's like oh it's okay i'm gonna help you and then i, I don't know if she was pulled in oh that's not yet my like, friend Oh, that's not, yeah? No, no. This oh, is the you're right. Where... They just opened the door. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They, they they tear off the... I don't know why they're tearing... The... I don't know why you'd want to look into the screaming cat door, but they are. <laughs> they tear the boards off, and there's this, it's just like a shot of the door, and the door just starts, like, creaking open slowly. And as, it like, the darkness opens, like, you briefly get it... Like, it briefly opens up enough that you finally see, like, pipes in his full glory, like, black dress, yeah. no eyes, scratched up. And then the sound guy is, like, knocked out by a mirror, and the door slams shut. Right, that's right. And right. Uh, I was mixing up with the later reveal. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and the the camera guy's knocked out, and um, the door closes. And as soon as the door slams shut, they do hear this older sister inside, like begging for help. Like there's like, she's in there, and it's, it's actually pretty like terrifying. You can just hear the this girl's voice. You didn't see her go in there, but you hear her screaming inside there, and she's t- saying that like someone's touching her and someone's hurting her under the stairs, and she needs help, and like. Y- Things are going chaotic now, and it's at this point that, like, there's a huge scream, and the broadcast itself, like, the entire broadcast, like, cuts to black for a second. And this also, uh, I mean, it gets a little bit dark because of what we're going to kind of find and, and is being revealed later on about about old pipes. Um, it it all sort of adds to the, the level of, like, well, this is not good when the little girls talk about getting hurt and stuff. Um, and I was just, like, afterwards, I was like, ooh, guys, ugh, I don't think I like this. Uh, it's getting getting too scary. Um, but yeah. uh, the broadcast cuts out completely. And a few moments later, like the live feed outside of the house comes back on. And what you see is Craig Charles and one of the tech guys are like just hanging out. They're laughing. They're having a good time. They're like, and then suddenly they realize they're live on camera. And they're like, it would be nice if someone told us they were cutting to us. Like what's going on? And it's very funny. The tone outside the house implies that like nobody knows what's happening inside of the house or in yeah. the studio basically. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Basically, outside the house, there's there's like a crowd of people. They're still kind of like having a good time. It's like a fun Halloween thing. Um, but they're sort of just like waiting. They're waiting around. They don't see stuff getting thrown around or whatever's happening inside the house. Mm-hmm. And we can still hear Michael Parkinson and Doctor Pasco in the studio. We just can't see them. And obviously, the people on the street can't hear them either because because they're they're talking over a top of kind of Craig outside, talking about how they're trying to get the camera feeds back online, and they're not sure what happened, why they've knocked out communications from the people in the house and the people outside. They can't they can't really get anything happening. And finally, we cut back into the studio. The cameras are back working again. They're like, okay, we've got a feedback from the house coming in. And then what they see on the feed from the house is a very calm feed. Uh, Sarah Green and the kids and the camera guy, they're all just like eating candy in the living room. Seems like nothing's wrong. Uh, mm. There's no indication of like kind of the scary stuff we had just seen moments before. And it's so funny because P- Michael Parkinson is like, sees it, he's like, well, looks like everything's back to normal. <laughs> I know, which is so funny because that's his response. It's like, there's clearly something wrong. Like everything has just been like, even if like things went back to normal after having, uh, you know, weird events happen you wouldn't just like casually sit down and play a board game like you're like something's not right something something clearly is not right yeah yeah my partner's like we still don't have contact with them on audio but i will get it soon in the meantime let's let's take another quick call uh yeah. it's at this moment that uh smitty hooks them up with a call that's a guy who's been calling in and he he's there he's like he's like i don't want to tell you my name but i'm going to tell you every revealing detail about me so i'd be easy to track down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's basically he's a dude who lived I, I think it's on that street or in the neighborhood he, he was a social worker uh that's back right. there in the 70s and he he used to or in the 60s um 60s, he, yeah and there was a family 
uh, or a husband and wife who used to live in that house, and they sublet a room to their nephew. Um, the nephew, he had just been released from a psych ward. Um, he was apparently a serial child molester who this social worker had to take care of. Um, yeah. Not never good to be a serial child molester in your house. That seems like trouble. It's not. I mean, if you if you cannot have a serial molester in your house, probably don't have them. And as soon as he moved into the house, he started to develop paranoid fantasies. He kept telling his social worker that a woman was inside of his body making him do things. And in the end, this 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 man who uh, lived in this house, he ended up killing himself by tying a wire around his neck and affixing it to a lathe in the workshop under the stairs to essentially to essentially hang himself. Yeah. And then and then they add the, the thing that. He had uh, multiple cats, and the cats were down there with him, and they ate his face. Yes, he had 12 cats, and he wasn't found for 12 days, so they ate his eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, so what you basically get is, like, uh, there's someone who killed themselves. He was a uh, disturbed individual. Is that okay to say? Can you say that? Disturbed sure. individual? I right. think you can say that about uh, this fictional thing. <laughs> okay, great. I, I don't know, you know. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and he was, I guess, maybe already possessed by what his mother Seddens or Seddens, whatever the name is. So it's like this weird multiple of like, he, that's the reason he's wearing a dress is because he thought he was kind of possessed by someone. And now he's also a ghost trying to possess people by talking through them. It's a, it's a, it's a weird ghost thing. Happening. Yeah. 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 There was, there was the child minder who lived there who drowned kids. And then when the serial child molester moved in, her ghost may have infested his body and then he killed himself in the house. So we got a lot of ghosts inside a ghost. It's a real ghost Russian nesting doll. Well, I was glad because I actually thought it was going to be some weird sort of like thing where they were like, you know, like psycho, like he wears a dress, thus he's crazy. You know, I thought it was going to be one of those, but it's not. It's it's a physical manifestation of of two entities kind of coexisting in sort of one uh, spectral body. Yeah, it's a ghost within a ghost. <laughs> it's a ghost within a ghost. Good title. <laughs> um, my favorite part is this. This guy tells him this whole story on this phone call, which is like terrifying and like lines up with everything and michael parkinson's like no this is all nonsense no more calls we're not doing any more calls they're all hoaxes no more calls please again that's the sort of thing he's just again it's the funny thing is he's on a show taking calls i know like weird things have happened and stuff but to be irritated thus uh, on the calls that are in it's like well of course they're gonna be jokey fun calls i guess i guess maybe he's they're supposed to say he's getting a little more frightened but he doesn't know how to deal with it so maybe he's angry but yeah it doesn't quite laugh yeah. At any rate, it's at this moment Dr. Pasco notices, notices something about the very serene live feed from the house that a picture that fell off the wall earlier is now back on the wall, which I was like, I mean, that's pretty limp evidence that uh, they could have put that photo back up, but sure. But this is before speed happens, so they didn't realize, you know. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right, speed fans? <laughs> And uh, Dr. Pasco starts telling uh, Parkinson that basically this isn't live. It's from an earlier broadcast. And uh, the, the live feed briefly cuts back in and it's like freaky town. You see like some huge stick like being like dragged through a floor. And then like a, the little sister covered it, it, cowering under her bed sheets. And it's really freaky. And then it just sort of cuts back to calm footage suddenly. And it's just like, okay, it's clearly whatever's happening in the house is terrible. And uh, something else is happening. Like we're getting we're getting a feed from earlier in the night. And I think they I think it's the uh, the doctor uh, Pasco. I think she even mentions at this point that uh, she thinks the the entity or the ghost has taken over the broadcast or is or is, is, is taking control in some way. That's how they're now getting this footage. That um, uh, he's he's manipulating things. Uh, not only in the house but also in the studio. Yeah, yeah. She she basically is under the assumption now that. Um, uh, something else has happened. The ghost is free. And I think Michael Parkinson initially is just like, that's dumb. We're in charge of the broadcast. And then <laughs> uh, literally wind blows to the studio and blows back his hair. And he's just like, how is there wind in a studio? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's pretty good because it starts with like a few things. Like I think, I think the first thing that happens is a light sparks. Mm, and then yeah. they have a few little things like that. And then it starts getting, yeah, wind just starts blowing. Things start moving around. Like it's getting, uh, what's happening in the studio is, is uh, replicating what's happening in the house. And Dr. Pasco basically tells us, the viewer and, you know, everyone, that essentially what, what has happened, she figures, that the live broadcast has inadvertently created a national seance. Yeah. I don't, they don't, I, I like that she drops that, but she doesn't explain how. It's just that somehow by being there and by viewing him, it has it has magnified things so that he is it has somehow 
brought him out. I don't, it, they don't explain it, but she's just like, we've done a seance. Pipes and, and likes the like, attention. I, I, yeah, he likes the attention. That's that's the one thing you cannot give old Pipes. Do <laughs> not give him attention. Uh, they feed cuts back to Craig Charles outside the house, um, and it's not so jovial there anymore. It's total chaos. The sound guy is being wheeled out uh, on a stretcher by an ambulance. Cops are arriving. The mother and the little sister outside of the house being like hustled into the back of a cop car. Um, but when they, they ask where, um, where the older sister, the cameraman, and uh, Sarah Green, the reporter, are, um, Craig Charles is just like, I don't know. They never came out of the house. And it's a, at this point, the house feed, the live house feed comes back in. And this is the time when they finally use that, like, um, what, what did you call that camera? The uh, heat sensor camera. Yeah. And apparently all the lights are from the house. It's pitch black. So they kind of use that infrared camera to navigate the house, which you're right. I was expecting a jump scare to come, but it never really does. They just, they use it to find a flashlight and then they turn the camera back to normal it, mode. It is funny. Yeah. It's, but it's used in a very real sense. Again, it's sort of like everything in, in this is um, done through the, through the scope of reality. So you're never going to get those sort of jumps that after the, Afterwards, you'd be like, oh, that didn't really make sense. That's not going to happen in this show. Everything like almost to a almost to a fault of because I would say this show sort of has a build, 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 and then never really has a final. Um, I don't know if it ever has that final punch that really um, uh, resolves things. Maybe you disagree with me, but um, I, and maybe that's just because we're so used to watching these types of movies that have these sort of jumps that that's what we that's the um, the sort of tension and uh, uh, a resolution we're looking for. But this just has that. Um, they, it just it, it they they go we we have a thermal camera bam there it is that's yeah, it yeah. that's all we're doing I know what you mean there's there's a lot of tension like they really build tension well but yeah. there very rarely does it lead to like a huge jump scare that you're expecting to come out uh, you know or any sort of resolution really yeah so it never really it never really comes that way um so they find this flashlight and then the house starts shaking and they cut back to the studio suddenly and like. The studio's in chaos, like you said. Like lights are exploding, glasses yeah. are exploding everywhere. Um, everything's insane. Back in the house, uh, uh, Green and the camera guy are looking for the older sister everywhere, and they hear her again begging for help under the stairs. And this is what you were referring to earlier. Uh, the doors jam to the uh, to the space under the stairs, so the cameraman and Green like force it open, and then. Green starts walking under the stairs, like asking her to like, she's like, just take my hand, just take my hand. And as mm-hmm. she goes into the stairs, there's like a huge wind sound. The the uh, door to the basement slams shut and then like all the cameras go off, like essentially being like something terrible has happened to her poor. She's been sucked under the stairs and whatever's mm-hmm. happened to little girls now happening to her and Pipes is doing nothing good to them. Nothing good. Yeah. <laughs> They're not down there petting the cats. Yeah. Those 12 cats just needed some time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, back in the studio, like the staff is fleeing pipes is on the catwalk looking down on them. Like it's like total chaos in there. And uh, Michael Parkinson, the, the constant professional, is, is narrating it all from us for us from his like position in the studio as, as they flee out, the power goes out and then comes back on because emergency power is on and uh, kind of ends on a bit of a creepy apocalyptic vibe where it's just Michael Parkinson alone in the studio. He's not even sure which cameras are working anymore. Mm-hmm. We mostly see his legs sort of walking through the scene as he tries to figure out if one of these cameras is working. And then he does notice finally the camera we're watching him on, it still has a teleprompter running on it. Yeah, that's right. So he approaches it and he's just like, oh, the teleprompter's still working on this one. And he's like, I don't know what it's saying though. And he starts reading it and it's it's a nursery rhyme he starts reading. And as he gets into the nursery mm-hmm. rhyme, his voice becomes demonic and he's like, you know, he kind of gets that pipes voice. And he just finishes reading this nursery rhyme in this like demonic voice and it like hard cuts to credits basically. Yeah. And that's sort of like the big like, uh, it's the the build to that and then you're obviously saying that uh, uh, Pipes has been able to achieve whatever he was looking to achieve in terms of some control or, or getting out or something to that effect. But it also is kind of the tell that this isn't real. Like, is it? En- you know what I mean? How it ends? It's like, oh, this was all kind of fictional. That's kind of their big, yeah. Again, their big sort of after you've watched this, you're like, just you know, it's all it's all not real. But I will say, up to this point, it's all done very straightforward, and there's no winking to the audience. There's no, uh, there's there's a real effort made to make this as realistic as possible, and and on that sense, it's it's very very effective. I know I was ragging on Parkinson a lot about his maybe his turns not all quite working, but for a movie that is cast with entirely news personalities, yeah, they're all doing it. Like Sarah Green in that house, she's a reporter. She's doing a crazy good job in Agreed. a terrifying position. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't know these aren't actors in in, uh, in in the performances they give, at least on some of these people. Like, they all do—everyone was great. 
I mean, do you have any final notes before we get into the ratings? Um, not really. I mean, I'm, 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 you know, part of me is, uh, glad they didn't go in this sort of typical, you know, it didn't, it didn't go over the top at any point. Um, but then part of me is also like, oh, I would have liked if there was a little bit more at the end. You know what I mean? Like there was, this was a very slow burn. Um, and in terms of the structure that they were trying to do, I think it was very effective in terms of an entertaining television show. Eh, I could have probably used a little bit more, um, uh, to build a little bit more, but, but I thought overall, I think of these sort of fake news program things, which we've seen quite a bit over, over the years, uh, TV shows do, I think this was by far the best I've seen in terms of, uh, in terms of the realism of it. Yeah. Fair enough. Do you want, do you want to give a rating then since you gave a nice little summary there? Yeah. Yeah. I would give this, um, I'm going to give it a seven out of 10. Uh, I'm almost at a seven and a half. I just, yeah, I don't know. There was, there was something missing for me, but I think all the performances were great. I, I like, I like how they structured this all. I just, yeah, seven out of 10. I hear you. I hear you. I think, I also think, and I wonder if it has because it was for television. They don't, we don't get all the scares that I think they built to that they could have delivered I, I, and really freaked me out. I think that's what it is, but I don't know if maybe that would be not in the service of the structure they were doing. So maybe that's forgivable, but I do think that like I was missing something. Yeah, I, I will say this. I, this is the first time we've watched anything where I was a little bit scared watching it. Like there are hmm. moments in this where I legitimately was just like, not sure if I wanted to see what was about to happen next. Like that jump scare right. never necessarily came, but there were moments like when that door is creaking open and like, we're going to see what's under the stairs for the first time. And like, it's such a slow creak open and you know, something bad's going to be down there. And I'm just like, I don't know if I want to see what's down there. It, right. Is it the scariest thing ever when it finally you get the peak? Not exactly. Like, not really, but maybe because it's for TV. But like, it's the first time we've ever watched anything where I'm just like, Oh, I'm a little bit scared, like genuinely scared watching this. Hmm. Like the tension was there. So what do you think? Ten out of ten. Out of ten. Eleven. Eleven out of ten. Yeah, twelve. It's a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think for many of the reasons you mentioned, I think it's a seven point five for me. I almost yeah. want to give it an eight, but it, I I feel the same way. I'm very close. I think I it just it just took, it needed some little piece to just push it the rest of the way over. And part of me wonders if it's just like it couldn't push as far because it was it was for TV. Like they couldn't have a real scary moment necessarily but i think very effective overall i was shocked how much i enjoyed it i was just like yeah. oh this is way more fun than i thought it would be and it's a it's a very competently put together uh program it's something where you know there's care and concern and uh they've done their research how these shows look and how they sound and how they um uh, they're given to the audience from everything from how the host interact with their guest, how they interact with the people on the street, how the people in the street act and how the callers are. All that is so seamless and works so well um, that it's, it's, it's all very impressive. But again, I think you're right. I think the only thing that's missing is when it builds, it can it could build to something much, much scarier. And they I think you're you're right. And I hadn't thought about it. I think the problem is it's on TV. And that's what it is. Is like it's still a nine PM show, and they can't get too scary, they can't get too gross, or they can't get too gruesome, or whatever it might be. So they have to pull back a little bit. So they really um, try to just ratchet things up with tension. And for the most part, they're very effective. Is just that in the end, there's only so far they can go. Yeah, it's a, it's a good show. Seven, hey, our 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 average is seven point two five. Our average, you know. Yeah, no, I think I think it's still as far as a Halloween halloween show for us to watch it was a nice mm -hmm. a nice one nice spooky one for uh like genuinely spooky one which i thought was fun yeah agreed um and good work to everyone involved they clearly care and effort i yeah i actually even liked i thought they did a good job parsing out the backstory you needed about the ghost via phone calls and things like it was it mm -hmm. was all built in fairly well and like it came at the right periods where you needed a little more information it was like delivered at the right time yeah it wasn't like um people just delivering lines of dialogue like that annoying thing people do in tv shows you know they they've been driving for two hours and they arrive at the house and be like why are we here again like they didn't do that sort of thing like it was all very seamless yeah 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 
Um, but that wraps up our Halloween episode. We had a fun mm-hmm. time, clearly. Um, if you want to get a hold of us to tell us things, uh, you watched Ghost Watch and it scared the pants off you, and you have, uh, I believe, in one of the notes I read, it was one of the, one of the first cases of uh, documented PTSD from television, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get into it, but there was some like. There are some people that some not so great stuff happened. Some people blamed the people on the show and they had to defend it. And I think that's part of the reason why yeah. uh, they're, uh, they're a little bit cagey about things. I don't think you can really blame a TV show because it was too effective. You know, it's like, yeah, but just say la vie. It definitely, it definitely did what it was supposed to do in 1992. <laughs> exactly. Um, but you can email us at continuedrag at gmail.com. And on Instagram and Twitter, uh, you'll, you'll get a chance to see pipes for sure. <laughs> Will you? I don't know if you will, because it's so quick. Oh, we'll put some stuff up there, some fun some fun spooky bits. It's a pretty spooky one, so not a lot of yeah. funny bits. No, there's not, is there? And there's one last thing to wrap up with, Jordan. The first time we'll be doing this on a proper episode. But uh, we're now doing bonus episodes for charity. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? The idea here is occasionally... People have uh, emailed us or messaged us some places and been like, oh, hey, you, you know, you skipped out on Tech War so early. Are you ever going to go back and like watch any more Tech War episodes? You know, we invented that we invented. We invented yeah. the escape pod. No one had thought of it before we did. We invented it. You and I built it. We, we rolled our sleeves up. We got all greasy. and We built it. <laughs> Which allows us to leave certain series when we kind of are, we're bored of them or they drop a certain, mm-hmm. you know how the escape pod works. You've listened to this podcast. But we thought what might be nice is, If you make a donation to charity, uh, we're not going to hold too firm to this, but we're going to say a suggested donation of $50. But if your means are different than uh, than other people's, like, you know, give to what you're capable to. We're not going to hold it against you if you do less than that. If you're you're not capable of that $50, that's okay, too. But on the website, on our Continued Drag website, you can get there by going to continuedrag.podbean.com or on our Instagram and Twitter. There'll be a link tree in all our bios now where you can click to this, a link to charity podcasts. We've, we've gathered a list of charities that have been um, curated by past guests, have come in and give us their favorite charity. So if you give some money to one of the charities on the list, you can send us an email, send us a receipt for your donation and tell us which episode of Tech War that we didn't watch you would like us to do a bonus episode on. We will uh, do a special bonus episode we'll release uh, about that episode. So you want? If, if, I don't know which Tech Wars we haven't watched, but we didn't watch quite a few of them, I think. So you could make us watch and, more. And I should say, it doesn't have to be Tech War, please, for the love of God. It could be Freaky Links. It could be uh, uh, Auto Man. It could be uh, any of these shows that we've, we've bailed out quickly. Um, it Basically... If you, if you give something to a charity, um, you'll torture us by making us watch another episode of a show we've already said we don't want to watch any more of. Um, so that's our this is our awkward introduction of this bonus episode for charity. Idea. Yeah. So maybe you can give a little money to charity. You get a little bonus episode of us. Yeah, go to the website. You can find links on the, how to get there on our social media. I Even if you go there, there's even a, somewhere on the ch- bonus episodes for charity page, there's a link that has a list of all the episodes we've skipped. So you can actually just go in and just see every episode we've skipped so you can pick from that from that list. But yeah, that's a new a new little thing we're gonna do this year. We'll see if uh, see how many people want to give a charity. I don't know. Maybe we'll never do one. Did we watch all of Kolchak? Oh, we watched all of Kolchak. Sorry, man, no, no Kolchak left for you. I would have watched another Kolchak episode. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm afraid the things we didn't watch will shock you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I can't. You know, I can't even remember the series. So it's there is something uh, nice about going back if we do watch something that we haven't seen in a long time because I can't even remember what we've seen honestly. Yeah, but that's just a, a new little thing we're going to do this year, see how it goes, and try to raise a little money for charity along the way. Mm-hmm. So that might be fun. Yeah. Um, but that wraps it up for this episode, I think. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if we were really, if we had really taken the time, we could have had this podcast, uh, things slowly get creepier as we go, and then Pipes has been part of our podcast, and we were creating a stance, you know, but instead we just did a normal pod- podcast. Just did a normal regular podcast. Let's thank our <laughs> guest Pipes for being here. <laughs> Thanks, Pipes. Yeah. Thanks for, um, I mean, it's not often we have um, uh, serial child molesters on the show, but, you know. I mean, only twice before. <laughs> <laughs> Which guest was it? Write it and yeah. tell us. Yeah. Yeah, while well, you're doing it to charity, tell us which our guest was. Uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel bad. Man, Jordan, saying. what a way to come back. I know. Yeah. The hiatus is definitely over. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
All right, listener, thank you for joining us. And Jordan, see you next week. See you then. Continuum Drag is recorded in Toronto, Ontario, and Seoul, South Korea. Theme music by James Rick Seedler. Produced by Jordan Dalek and Luke Black. Special thanks to Aaron Younes. <laughs>